Hello everybody and welcome back to Outcast Studios. I hope you've all had a good day and welcome back specifically to Anadonia. Yes, it is that time once again to sit down at my desk and record Anadonia. Uh, now, unlike all the other times I've done this in the past however long, um, I actually have a couple of things already planned out as to what I'm gonna do today. Because as some of you might already know, most of the time I just wing this. And um, ironically, it's none of the things on this board, I don't think, that I want to get done today are actually it is. You see, it's been quite some time since I've touched the ME storage system, the computer that we set up, uh, right as we ended season one of Anadonia, actually. And wow, we are on, what, what is this gonna be? This is gonna be like episode uh, 13 onwards for this session. And Ruby's still not here. I miss him. Uh, but yes, it has been that long since we've touched the computer, and it's starting to become an issue because, I mean, quite some time ago, pretty much instantly since we built it, we've run out of space. We have at the most four or five slots, perhaps, left in this thing. And, I mean, we've got space in the drive, the, the drive container, but we don't have space in the actual drives. So, the plan is, for today's session, to basically make more drives. Now, I remember from the last time we did this, this was a pain in the ass. Which is one of the reasons I never actually touched it after we made the first few. However, today, since all I'm doing is making the drives, I feel like I'm going to be able to focus in a lot better, just in general, on uh, getting things done. Now, we have a ton of 4K storage cells, even though it can go much higher. In fact, I'm pretty sure in the default uh, Applied Energistics 2 base game, uh, with no extra add-on mods, this is the highest you can get, which is a 64K ME storage cell. However, if we just type in, without the at app, ME storage cell, as you can see, a lot more appear, and that's because we have uh, AE2 extras, which, as you can see here, this goes up to a 16 million ME storage cell. And I mean, we don't only need one of these in order to, like, basically never run out of space. Uh, but this would require either storage housing or building it from scratch with the storage housing around it, because, I mean, the storage housing is just this without the internal processor. But to make a 16 million storage component, we'd need four, three 4 million as well as a calculation processor and some glowstone, and a 4 million would require another calculation processor and some 1 millions, and the 1 millions would require 256 thousands, which would, would require, uh, again, a calculation processor, but 64K, which would go down to 16K, 4K, and 1K, and 1K requires logic processors, which would require printed logic circuits. And this is just one giant stack of things, one after the other, which is why I found it so tiring originally to make this. However, the plan is for today to actually automate this system so that we can just keep producing this sort of stuff. And the easiest way to do that, I think, is going to be to build a ton of inscribers. Now, we've got enough Fluix crystals, trust me, um, but actually... You wouldn't know about that, would you? Let me show you something really quick. You know, I spend so long crossing over between the two series that it never really occurred to me that there might be some people out there that just don't watch the other series on my channel. And so a lot of the time, you'll, th you'll find things like this or this just appearing in here with no explanation as to why. Uh, again, you would have an explanation if you if you if you watched my other series, you know, you know, just a small plug there, you know, go watch Starsick. Um, but if you don't, then you might just think this is coming out of nowhere. So I think I'm just gonna go through and show you all uh, just what I've done in the other series. Just a quick recap so you can understand what all of this is. Uh, so we'll start with this over here. I, I don't remember. <laughs> Uh, what series I built half of this stuff for, but this is a mob spawner that's constantly producing creepers uh, to farm it for its liquid meat and its pink slime, which are both full, so this is basically just wasting energy now uh, because we don't have infinity liquid storage. But the reason we needed uh, pink slime specifically is because uh, if we come over here, we have a dissolution chamber which we used to create... Um, 
I mean, we, have, we also have a fluid extractor, which is constantly making latex from this. But we made a dissolution chamber so that if we, um, if you follow me down here, whoops, I forgot I'd need this. But you know, if you follow me through here, um, which again, I, ex I showed this off in Starsick, but I don't think I've shown it off down here. Uh, in between episodes, I managed to use a lot of the like excess resources we have to put this place together. Um, it's just supposed to be like a, a small hidden lab. I want to use this as like a surprise for Ruby when he gets back. I want to, oh, using this, I basically want to get him a bunch of cool stuff so that he doesn't feel like he's like left behind. Uh, but if we come through here, uh, ignore that. Uh, there was supposed to be a wither boss in here being held in a stasis chamber uh, to be farmed for its ether gas, which we used to do something. To be completely honest, I, I've completely forgotten why we were making all of this in the first place. Um, but we, we were farming ether gas using a wither, which, you know what, while we're here, let's, let's replace it because it disappeared for some reason. Hmm, that's odd. We appear to be missing some wither skulls. There's no way I've lost a bunch of wither skulls, right? Well, I mean, I found the nether stars. But I don't know where the wither skulls have gone. This could be an issue. Uh-oh, this is turning out to be a really big issue. Where did I put them? Well, I didn't find the wither skull heads, but I did find some printed silicon. And you know what? Um, I I'm just going to grab all of this stuff now, especially the 4K storage components, just because it's better to have all of this on me for when I need it. I also found out that I have just some encased chain drives lying around, some, some shafts, another brass funnel for some reason, and five deployers, which would have really been helpful when I was putting together the, the, the precision mechanism device. Oh, there we go. We've got a stack of wither skulls right there. That's absolutely brilliant. So, next part of the plan, drop one of each off in the transmutation tablet, just so that we always have access to it should we need it. And now let's re-establish the wither. God, if we ever run out of power, I am gonna be terrified. One, two, three. Did I really just do math wrong? And now just to, oh, that's not good. I'm starving to death. Hang on, that's unusual. I don't usually starve to death. I... Now that's interesting. Where? Hmm. I guess I forgot to put concrete in. Hang on, let me just quickly fix that. I don't have any blocks on me, do I? Let's use obsidian. Hopefully that doesn't mess with the door mechanism. And then we just put one, two, and three. There we go. And hopefully that thing stays stuck in the stasis chamber. Hopefully. And you can just, you can just stay there as well. You deserve it for being born. And let's lock this guy back up. Yeah, it didn't break the door. Now back to what I was doing. Um, this mechanism right here is something I put together in order to charge Certus Quartz into, well, charged Certus Quartz. Uh, basically, you put the uncharged Certus Quartz in this barrel here, it gets fed into the conveyor belt and then fed into the charger, and then once it's charged, because of the filter on here, it then releases it into this barrel. And the reason I made this is so that I could drop uh, charged Certus Quartz into here, which would then mix it up with the redstone and nether quartz to produce fluix crystals. Uh, but right now, because I don't have the filter on, it is just continually producing rose quartz. Which, I mean, is it's good for us, because, I mean, infinite rose quartz production. But eventually we're going to run out of space and then we're going to have a whole new issue. And I believe, for the most part, that's it in terms of new machines down here that you wouldn't have known about. Um, but if there are any more, just drop a comment down below and I'll go over them. Now, I did mention that today, for the first part of uh, this session, we're going to be crashing because, of course, we are. Okay, see you in a second. Don't you just love it when recovering from a crash completely makes you forget what you were doing because it took that long? Uh, anyway, so, on to the first part of today's session. Now, obviously, in order to make the 16 million ME storage drive, we can't just use a 16 million storage component because we don't have one. We've got to follow the line all the way back to the very starting one, which is the 1K storage component, which requires logic processors. Now, a logic processor requires the printed logic circuit, which is gold and an inscriber logic press in an inscriber. So that's what we were doing. We were building a bunch of inscribers because even though we have one over here somewhere, I don't want to move that one, mainly because I'm just... 
I, I want to say I'm lazy, but is it really laziness if I don't want to do the easy option because it'd take too long? Like, the option I'm going to take is going to take infinitely longer, but it feels like it'd take less time, which is strange. But either way, in order to make the inscriber, we needed the Fluix Crystals, that's it. And we also need some Sticky Pistons, which is thankfully just pistons and uh, slime. That's an interesting thing. Something I keep forgetting about is that we just don't have any wood in the computer. Like, we are genuinely running low on wood. That is an issue that we are having. I guess this is a wood farm after all. But of course, because this thing doesn't have an output selected, we are going to have to turn it off manually before we can get anything from it, which means we're going to have to make a hole in the ground to uh, access the machine. Ow! Ow! Cry! I forgot I'm not wearing armor. Ow! That hurt. Wait, hang on. That's just gonna replace, isn't it? God damn it! Why? Why do I not have any tools with me? Hang on. Let me go get some tools. I've left all of my stuff in the chest. All right. Give me all of my stuff back. There we go. I would grab the backpacks, but I don't really need them right now. Oh yeah, that's something else that you just wouldn't know about if you didn't watch Star Sick. I built myself a gem helmet uh, so I could use the night vision it provides so that I could see better in caves. Uh, it's pretty simple, all things considered. It's a soul stone, which I gain I've made in Star Sick. That's what I've done more Project E stuff in my other series than I have in this one, which is interesting. And a Clan Star Omega and an Evertide Amulet, which, I mean, I have mine around my neck now. But yeah, I, I did that. Um, maybe I should start doing, like, montage cut-ins. So, like, whenever I do something important in the other series that affects both, I should, like, make a cutaway Family Guy style to it. I think that'd be a pretty interesting way of going about things. Okay, so checking in the first chest, there is nothing, because it's going to put it in the last chest, isn't it? There we go. We have gotten ourselves quite a bit of mystery wood. We've gotten very little in the way of golden apples, though, which is annoying, considering that's the point of this farm. I mean, look at this wood. Look at this wood and tell me that there is anything out there that would love it. Like, it looks so ugly. I resent the fact that that zoomed in on my face when I said that. But either way, we have the wood now, so we can just um, right-click that bearing and have it do its job again. There we go. So, dropping back into the computer room now, let's just take half of this, turn half of it into planks, and then drop it up there. There we go, and then we can drop the rest of this up there. And then we can make ourselves the piston, which would allow us to make the sticky piston. So give me two... actually, you know what, no, just give me as many of these as we can get. Give me four of these. Uh, and then what we can do is we can make them into sticky pistons. One, uh, two, three, and four. There we go. And then we need some more iron, but thankfully we have 74 blocks of the stuff in here. You know what? Let's just take half of these, turn it into iron ingots, and chuck it back in. There we go. That works. And now we can make ourselves only two inscribers. But you know what? For now, two inscribers is all we need. This place feels a lot more hollow without Ruby. Right then, so moving over to this side of the room, because this side's starting to get a little cluttered, let's put the first inscriber here. There we go. Actually, no, no. Let's bring it one out from there, just in case we need to access the back of it. Uh, and then let's... <laughs> <laughs> I'm using Wither Skulls as my alternate building block, that's kind of funny. Let's put that one there. So, in order to make the first step of the K uh, components, which is probably a bad name to call them. Oh yeah, one thing I've decided I'm going to do is I'm going to start taking advantage of the favoriting thing, just so I don't have to keep looking through all of this stuff. I, I think that's pretty smart decision to make, I'm not gonna lie. But yeah, for the step one, it requires logic processors, which requires a logic circuit, which requires the inscriber logic press and some gold. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this inscriber... Ooh, this is the calculation press, hang on. Where's the logic press? Here we go, let's grab the inscriber logic press and let's put this into the slot that it goes in, which would be this one. Ignore the fact that I got that wrong, shut up. And then we need a way to start piping in gold. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to pipe the gold in through the top, maybe? Or would it want it to be in from the front? Or maybe even the side? There's no way to choose an input and output in this, even though there are uh, acceleration cards that you can put in here. It, so maybe, it, maybe it'll just accept it through any? And then I have to specify using those to filter it out. Let's, um... Let's do that, hang on. So what we can do is we can take advantage of the brass funnel that we've got right here, so we don't have to make one, and we can set this to output only the, I believe it was the inscriber logic press, I, I don't have a good memory. 
the printed logic circuit, sorry. We can use it to output only the printed logic circuit by just feeding it a single printed logic circuit. But of course, to do that, we need some gold to generate the first one, which we do have, trust me, in abundance, but I, I don't remember what backpack we have it in. I'm, I'm gonna have to start naming these. Okay, this is raw ores. This is a raw ores backpack. This one is also raw ores, but it has the gold in, so let's just uh, grab this. And while we're here, let's take this as well. Then we can put this back in the chest. And then what we have to do is we stick the gold up here. Now, the inscriber requires power, which, again, I can plug it into the main system, but I'm getting extremely wary of how often I can keep doing that before it starts to drain the power. Because while we've got an infinite source during the day, as soon as the sun goes down, this thing is solar powered and we don't have capacitors that are charging to provide that backup power. So if we put enough strain on the system, eventually it will run out during the night and the wither will be released.